We also have some spectacular new video this morning from the shipwreck of the Titanic. In fact, these are the first new images from the Titanic in 14 years. From a 1986 expedition to explore the sunken wreckage of the Titanic. The sinking of the Titanic has been interwoven with the very fabric of maritime history and culture for over 100 years. While it seems to be an open and shut case, featuring an unsinkable ocean liner and a massive iceberg in the middle of the Atlantic, there are still several aspects of this catastrophic event that remain shrouded in mystery. Join us today as we attempt to unmask 15 mysteries about the Titanic that cannot be explained. Number 15. Was the Titanic deliberately sunk? What if for over 100 years we have been lied to about the circumstances surrounding the sinking of the Titanic? What if it was never an accident? How wild would that be? For many years we have attributed this phenomenal disaster to a series of unfortunate coincidences. But what if everything was just part of a master plan by a shadowy figure who has succeeded in convincing the entire world that this just wasn't the mass murder that it was? When this theory first came out shortly after the Titanic sinking in 1912, many people were pretty skeptical about it. But it has since gained a massive following, so much so that it has become a massive part of the history and culture of the Titanic event. This strange theory proposes that the sinking of the Titanic was intentionally orchestrated by J.P. Morgan in order to eliminate opposition to the creation of the Federal Reserve Bank. This is a pretty deep conspiracy theory, but it does hold some water when you take a very good look at it. You see, on this ship were some of the wealthiest men in the world at the time, and none of them survived the crash. For example, there's John Jacob Astor IV, who happened to be the richest man in the world at the time, and he didn't make it out of the accident alive. Then there's Benjamin Guggenheim and Isidore Strauss, all wealthy businessmen whose opinions held heavy weights at the time. What did they all have in common? Apparently, they all heavily opposed the creation of the United States Central Bank. When you travel deep into this particular controversy theory, you discover a loop that connects to several wars and conflicts that have ravaged human civilization over the years. These monumental historical events often have one thing in common. Well, I may have to start minding what she reads from now on, won't I, Mrs. Brown? Beyond the gore of war, the false sense of nationalism, and the facade of trying to protect the nation, each of these has often been linked to the creation of a central bank within the territory in question. It's like modern slavery, but in financial dimensions. It is believed that these rich businessmen took a firm stand against the creation of a central bank for the United States, and that was why the big heavyweights like J.P. Morgan, who had the power to do absolutely anything, had the ship sunk. What's more, they made it look like an accident, made a movie about it, and made it a love story. And they've been convincing the world of this fabricated reality for over 100 years. But is this theory true, or just a product of an overactive imagination? Well, according to fans of the Napoleon of Wall Street, that's the nickname given to J.P. Morgan, just in case you don't know. So, according to the many people who have debunked this theory, many of these rich businessmen were actually in support of the creation of the central bank at the time. So, that essentially eliminates the first and most important premise of this theory. But there's more. Over the years, it has consistently been proven that the sinking of the Titanic was orchestrated by its unfortunate collision with an iceberg in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So, Get back! this case has been closed, but conspiracy theorists won't let this issue rest, and there's many more conspiracy theories where that came from. The next one is even wilder than this one. Number 14 the legend of the mummy's curse. Did you know that apart from the 2,220 passengers and crew aboard the RMS Titanic, there was one other passenger on board whose presence may have inevitably doomed the ship? Intertwined with this massive disaster is a mystery that has resisted resolution for decades. This passenger, whose presence on the ship had raised numerous questions, may have not indirectly or directly altered the course of events surrounding the unfortunate sinking, but by her very presence she magnetizes conspiracies. According to this particular legend, this mysterious passenger was Princess Amun-Ra, an ancient Egyptian princess whose mummy was being transported aboard the ship. But this was no ordinary archaeological wonder. 
The remains of Princess Amun-Ra carries a significant spooky factor. The British Museum, from which it was being transported, had relinquished its grips on the artifact after it was observed to have been indirectly linked to multiple mysterious deaths. And of course, there's the eerie sound the night guards heard every night. It was like a horror movie. Many postulate that the mummy, which was very much linked to bad luck, must have placed the ship under a terrible aura, which eventually led to its sinking. However, there are many holes in this theory. For one, there is no documented account of a mummy being loaded onto the shop. Secondly, this particular mummy is actually still very present at the British Museum. So this theory basically holds no water. Regardless, many people still hold on to this explanation as they try to grapple with the realities of such a devastating event. Number 13. The Premonition of the Unsinkable Molly Brown Remember Molly Brown, one of the most famous survivors of the Titanic disaster? Well, turns out she may have had a little dream that bore a striking resemblance to the events that later unfolded in just a couple of days. To start with, Margaret Molly Brown was not even supposed to be on the Titanic. She had been on a tour that took her to Egypt, Italy, and France when she got the upsetting news that her grandson had fallen ill. Determined to be by his side as soon as possible, Margaret Brown booked passage on the next available ship, which was the Titanic. Four days after she boarded the vessel in Cherbourg, France, it sank. As the scenes began to unfold, everything seemed oddly familiar to Brown, but she just couldn't place what it was. Had she seen this before? Was this déjà vu? But within the intense moments, survival was the first thing on her mind. It was much later that she was able to recount the dream she had had days before boarding the Titanic. In this dream, she had been aboard a massive cruise ship, which also sank after crashing into an iceberg. Was this prophetic dream a sign from a higher power? A premonition of things to come? Many often dismiss this theory as a mere coincidence, but who knows? In the midst of such a chaotic event, it is only characteristic that humans seek answers in every aspect available. So, sometimes we even explore supernatural explanations, regardless of whether this dream had anything to do with the crash or not, as she was credited for saving many lives during the tragic crash. Number 12. The Disappearance of William J. Stead Within the symphony of unrelated events that eventually reached its climax in the sinking of the Titanic, there lies another enigma, which has captivated the attention of many Titanic enthusiasts for years. It is fascinating to note that Molly Brown was not the only one who had a premonition about the ship's sinking. The enigmatic journalist William J. Stead not only knew about his own death beforehand, he even wrote about it. Okay, he may not have literally predicted his own death, but some of the fictional tales he wrote shortly before his death bore eerie semblance with the events that eventually led to his demise. For example, take a deep dive into two ship-sinking stories this man wrote and see if you can spot any resemblance with the details of the Titanic sinking. In How the Mail Steamer Went Down in Mid-Atlantic by a Survivor, written in 1886, William Stead describes a ship that had gone down around the same spot the Titanic had sunk. Sounds familiar? There's more. In 1892, Stead pens another fictional ship sinking story titled From the Old World to the New. In this new book, Stead documents the fictional tale of an ocean liner, the Majestic, which rescues survivors aboard a sinking ship which had crashed into an iceberg. All these probably sound eerily familiar because 20 years later, William Stead died aboard the Titanic, which sank after colliding with an iceberg in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Coincidence? Well, it all depends on who you ask. Number 11. The Infamous Switch Theory The quiet, dismal night watched on in horror on the night of April 14, 1912, as the Atlantic Ocean swallowed the ocean liner without breaking a sweat. But was it the Titanic that sank indeed? Or was this a perfectly orchestrated insurance scam? Of the many conspiracy theories surrounding the Titanic sinking, this is probably the wildest. You've probably heard stories of people who burned down their houses just to claim insurance money. That's how desperate human beings can be. Within the unfolding enigma of the Titanic sinking, there exists a lingering suspicion of such an elaborate scam being at play in this incident. This one involves the sister ship of the Titanic, known as the Olympic. By linking several unrelated events and occurrences that occurred prior to the sinking of the Titanic, conspiracy theorists have hewn a tale implicating the Olympic as the ship which had indeed fallen victim of the unfortunate crash, while the Titanic remained hidden somewhere, now masquerading as the Olympic. Prior to the sinking of the Titanic, the RMS Olympic had sustained significant damage and was on the verge of becoming an insurance nightmare. 
nightmare. In order to avoid the ensuing drama, the White Star Line, under the control of J.P. Morgan, had switched the two ships, and in reality, it was the Olympic that sank on that fateful night. But does this theory hold water? Absolutely not. You see, due to the fact that the insurance payout that was expected from this scam was only a fraction of what it cost to build the Titanic, this was a pretty stupid plan. That aside, the level of stealth it would have required to switch the two ships would have required an unparalleled level of precision, which would be practically impossible considering the size of these vessels. In summary, this is just another wild tale and has been dismissed a long time ago, but it still has its supporters, many of whom are watching this video right now, so it lives on. Number 10. Why did the SS Californian ignore the Titanic's plea for help? As the events of the night unfolded, the Titanic was not alone in the icy waters of the Atlantic on that night. Just a couple of miles away was another massive ocean liner, the SS Californian. But in spite of the fact that the crew members aboard the California claimed to have seen rocket fires, a form of distress signal from the Titanic, they didn't do anything about it. The SS Californian itself was very lucky that night. The captain of the ship had docked the vessel because the sea was overrun by icebergs, and he couldn't risk venturing into the dark night and putting the lives of his passengers and crew in danger. As soon as the crew of the California discovered that the waters were too treacherous to be trodden in the dark of night, an alert was sent to the wireless operator of the Titanic. But in a display of unprofessionalism that eventually contributed to the tragedy, the operator asked the crew of the SS Californian to shut up because he was busy. Turns out he was indeed busy relaying the announcement of a poker game that was slated for later that night. Unfortunately, the poker game never happened, and several lives were lost due to the fact that more priority was given to irrelevant things than the relaying of important information that could have saved the lives of thousands of people. Eventually, when the Titanic met its doom, several distress calls were placed to the SS Californian, but none went through. The crew had gone to sleep, and had shut off the wireless communicator. It still remains a mystery why the crew of the Californian decided to abandon their fellow travelers in their desperate time of need, and this enigmatic piece of the history of the Titanic has been a subject of wild theories and speculations for many years. Number 9. Why did the Titanic split apart? One of the most iconic images from the night of the Titanic disaster was the moment when the massive ocean line broke apart, its sound echoing into the silent night. This was before the final plunge that took the rest of the people on board down to the middle of the ocean, burying them in a watery grave. Although there are varying accounts of when, how, and if this event happened, there are many eyewitness accounts providing corroborative evidence in support of this occurrence. Many survivors, including Charles Lightholer, didn't actually see the ship break up. But others like Jack Thayer claimed to have seen the huge silhouette of the ship falling back into the water. The variation in the accounts of the night can be attributed to the gloomy darkness that enveloped the ocean on the night of the event. Also, the light aboard the ship had given in the darkness, so it was pretty hard to see anything. It was only when the wreckage of the ship was discovered in 1985 that it was officially confirmed that the ship had indeed broken up. But how did the RMS Titanic become a two-piece play toy in the hands of the mighty ocean? According to historians, this dramatic breakup happened around 2.18 a.m., but there are many, many theories that try to explain this breakup. It is believed that the breakup of the ship played a huge role in how fast it sank, and maybe just maybe more people would have made it off the ship if it didn't break into two. Number 8. Mystery of the Titanic Orphans The wave of emotions that swept through the hearts and minds of Michael and Edmund Navratil as they made it onto the very last lifeboat to be loaded off the Titanic could only have been described as euphoria. Thanks to the incredible efforts of their father, they were able to secure a spot before the ship disappeared into oblivion. That was the last time they ever saw him. But this man was not just a hero in this story, he was also a villain. You see, the two boys wouldn't even be on that ship if it wasn't for their father. Apparently, he had abducted them from their mother and was traveling with them to America, where he hoped to build a new life in the new world. In his last words to his two boys, Michelle and Edmund, aged four and two respectfully, he asked them to tell their mom that he loved her and always will, and that he had hoped she would go with them on this adventure to create a new life. The two boys eventually became known as the only children who made it out of the boat without their parents. But that wasn't the end of the mystery. You see, these boys spoke French and couldn't communicate in English so they couldn't be identified. Therefore, they received a new name, Louis and Lola, 
and were collectively known as the Titanic Orphans. But they weren't left alone. A passenger by the name of Margaret Mays took them in, while the newspaper published the news of their disappearance, in the hope that their mother would identify them and come forward. Eventually, the story came to the notice of Marcel, their mother, who was overjoyed that her sons had finally been found alive. Without wasting any time, Marcel sailed for New York where the boys had found sanctuary, and on May 16, 1912, she was reunited with her sons. Number 7. The Coal Bunker Fire As we delve deeper into the enigma of this crash, uncover another puzzling detail that might offer a glimpse into the series of unfortunate events that led to the eventual demise of the Titanic. Although many people don't know this, the iceberg was not the only thing that caused the Titanic to sink. Did you know that the ocean liner was actually battling a blaze in coal bunker number six? Yes, the crew of this ship was able to hide this chilling detail from the passengers as they trooped into this engineering marvel, unaware that it was being plagued by an uncontained accident that eventually played a huge role in its fatal destruction. Do you want to know something even more disturbing? This coal fire had started before the ship sailed, but the crew knew how to battle the blaze, and they attempted to shovel the burning coal into the furnace of the engine in an attempt to utilize the destructive force to the advantage of the vessel. But this blaze was particularly stubborn, and the fire refused to be put out. Although many people believe that the Titanic would have sunk with or without the fire in the hull, the damage done by the blaze also played a huge role in determining the number of casualties that were reported in the incident. Number 6. The Fate of the Titanic's Cat Whatever happened to the feline companion of the ocean liner has also remained a mystery over the years. In maritime culture, there exists an interwoven history between man and feline a relationship that dates back to the very early days of maritime exploration. Many ancient vessels often feature a non-human passenger or crew, depending on how you classify them. Having a cat on board a ship is believed to attract good luck to the voyage, so you shouldn't be all too surprised that people started pointing out the fact that, by the time the Titanic set sail, the ship's cat was nowhere to be found. According to one of the surviving crew members, the feline was seen transporting her kittens off the ship just days before the maiden voyage. Could this cat have sensed that there was trouble brewing at sea, or was this just a coincidence? That depends on who you ask. In the years following this unfortunate incident, many people have blamed the captain and his crew for not acting promptly upon the many, many signs that pointed to the fact that the trip was doomed for disaster. Could they have done anything better, or was it all fate? Sadly, we may never know. Before we go on with the video, here's our subscribers pick for today. Although it seems the case of the Titanic sinking is fully open to public exploration, there are several aspects of this catastrophic event that still remain shielded from the public. This image, which appears to have been taken moments before the Titanic set sail on its maiden voyage, was only recently released into the public eye and has sparked several speculation and theories. Who were these women? Did they survive the crash? What impact does the discovery of this image have on the series of events that led to the Titanic sinking? Share your thoughts on this with us in the comments section. Now, back to the video. Number 5. The inconsistencies in the iceberg descriptions. Even more puzzling than many of the mysteries discussed in the video is the inconsistencies that were observed in the eyewitness descriptions of the iceberg that had sunk the Titanic. For years, experts have studied reports from those present at the scene and the pictures taken by other ships which had passed through the areas, but those accounts are sometimes vastly different. But this doesn't come as a surprise. After all, in the process of such a life-threatening event, the last thing anyone would want to focus on was the iceberg. As everybody scrambled to save themselves, it was very unlikely that anyone would be hell-bent on getting an accurate view of what the iceberg they had hit looked like. But that's not the only reason for these discrepancies. You see, unlike the Hollywood depiction, the night wasn't really lit. As a matter of fact, it was very, very dark that night, so it would be practically impossible to get a good view of the iceberg. The descriptions vary greatly, and some accounts even suggest that the iceberg had a streak of red paint on it, reminiscent of a recent impact. The debate surrounding the shape and size of this iceberg remains one of the puzzling aspects of this monumental event that rocked the whole world to its core. Number 4. The Man Behind the Machine, Captain Edward Smith In the midst of the chaos that followed the collision of the Titanic with the iceberg, one can only wonder how the captain managed the situation. The man in charge of this massive vessel was maritime veteran Captain Edward Smith. He was an enigmatic leader and a hero of the Titanic disaster. 
But there's a couple of details from this story that seem to implicate Captain Smith in the crime of negligence and improper pattern of leadership. You see, this was his last voyage before retirement, so he was probably on a low tempo and trusted everything to go well. But nothing went well, and he has often been blamed for it. First was his attitude when the damage was first reported to him. It is unclear whether his reaction was born out of overconfidence or a lackadaisical attitude, but he initially dismissed the damage as non-fatal to the ship. It wasn't until the ship began to take on water that Captain Smith realized how deep in trouble they were. But his story doesn't end without a mystery. Although many of these mistakes try to taint his name, the survivors of the Titanic describe him as a heroic figure who risked his life to save many people as the event unfolded. There is even a story about him swimming to deliver a baby to a lifeboat and swimming back to the ship to save other people when he could have simply entered the lifeboat. However, another account casts a shadow on this story of heroism. According to other reports, Captain Smith was nowhere to be found in the chaos. It seemed he had mysteriously disappeared, abandoning his passenger and crew when they needed him the most. Indeed, it was all man for himself. The theory even gets wilder with claims that Smith had actually made off the ship alive and eventually lived out the rest of his days on a remote island under a pseudonym. Of course, there's always been the occasional winter gales, storms, fog, and the like. Number 3. The Curious Case of Violet Jessup On November 21, 1916, news of the sinking of the Britannic, another British ocean liner, spread around the world. This behemoth of the sea was used as a hospital ship during the First World War and was now cruising the Aegean Sea as it made its way to the bloody battlefield of Gallipoli in Turkey. Unlike the Titanic, this was not a natural disaster. The Britannic had struck a mine, and the resulting explosion caused devastating damage to the vessel. Many passengers scrambled to get off the ship, but for one of the nurses, it was deja vu all over again. Her name was Violet Jessup, and she was one of the survivors of the Titanic. Just a few years later, here she was again, battling to survive another sinking ship. Luckily, she made it out of the Britannic alive, but this was not the end of her story. But that's not even the end of this woman's chilling story. She was also a passenger on board the RMS Olympic when it collided with the HMS Hawk on September 20, 1911. How this woman was able to survive not one, not two, but three maritime disasters has remained a subject of debate and speculation for many years. She eventually came to be known as Miss Unsinkable, a title that you will agree is very befitting. Number 2. The Mysterious John Arthur Priest in this story of eerie coincidences, John Arthur Priest stands as a mysterious figure, and his story has inspired many tales. If you thought Violet Jessup was the only one who was lucky to survive multiple crashes, think again. Although the story of Priest may not be as polished and famous as that of Jessup, it is undoubtedly a fascinating tale of luck and survival. Priest, who was a fireman on the Titanic, was able to survive the ship, but this was not his first rodeo. As a matter of fact, this man was part of the crew of the Asturias, which sank in 1907, but he survived. He was also in the HMS Olympic when it collided with HMS Hawk in 1911, but he survived. Priest was also aboard Alcantara when it was torpedoed in February 1916, but he also made it out alive. This unkillable man was also on the Britannic, just like Violet Jessup when it hit a mine and sank in November 1916. You already guessed what happened next. He survived as always, but he didn't stop there. He also survived the sinking of the Donegal in April 1917, at which point no one wanted to be on a ship with him. Everyone started to believe that he was probably jinxed, so they avoided having him aboard at all costs. Priest eventually died of natural causes in 1937, but his unkillable legacy stands as a testament to the immense luck this man must have possessed to be able to survive that many massive maritime disasters. Number 1. The Last Tunes of the Titanic Band Gentlemen, it has been a privilege playing with you tonight. Admittedly, this one may seem like a pointless debate, but many people have argued about what the last song played by the Titanic band was. This band, whose fame has arisen from the fact that they literally played to death. As the events of the day unfolded, these men resigned to fate. Instead of trying to book a spot on the lifeboats, they chose to serenade the passengers and crew with music. But what was the last song they played? The subject has been fiercely debated for years. Many people claim it was the solemn hymn, Nearer My God to Thee.
But many other sources claim that the band had dished out tunes from popular songs of the day, or a melancholic orchestra that was befitting of such a moment. Which one it was, these musicians remain one of the most loudly celebrated heroes of the Titanic. Although they probably didn't save anybody's lives, they made sure that the final moments of those who became casualties were as blissful as they could make it with their musical prowess. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.